Well, uh, tonight, um, uh, again, I'm just, I'm really excited, just got to calm down some uh, <laughs> in order to get everything out to you that I believe that God wants to get to you tonight. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just super excited about uh, God and about Jesus, about his word, the Holy Spirit, his gifts, the promises, the grace of God, the favor of God, the joy of the Lord. I am just so excited that God chose us to pour this out on us. I mean, I mean, like not just a drip, but pour it out, like just throw it out. I mean, just, just cover you up with it. Have you all ever been to, um, those of you who have children probably have been to Disney or watched uh, Disney Channel, they have this stuff called slime, the green slime, and then when they dump it over you, it's just just gooking just all over you. Well, that's the way God ain't gooky, but that's the way I believe he wants us to receive everything that he has for us, that he's just going to pour it out and it's going to cover up everything because, you know, people have to pull it away in order to be able to see. But you know what? We don't want to pull it away because we're not trying to see out of our physical eyes. We want to see out of the spirit of God. And I just, I'm just praying that God would just dump it over on us tonight. I mean, the good gook, <laughs> the good gook from God to be dumped on us. Uh, and I'm just, uh, while I was praying and, and just uh, thanking God, uh, I'm, I'm always praying and talking to God about the glory of God. We want to see the glory of God. And he said, he said, Deborah, he said, you have seen the glory of God. I mean, you know, we think of, we have our idea of what we think the glory is. And I said, you know, God, I really want the glory of God to be seen in my life. And he said, Deborah, people do see the glory of God in your life. And I said, what do you mean? He said, he told me, he said, people have asked you and you've not had an answer, not a real answer that you were good with. Uh, how do you do it? You're standing so strong. We don't know how you do it. How are, you, how, how are you continuing on and enjoying life and, and things seem to be going well with you? And I've had people say, you know, I, I gain my strength from you. God said, that's the glory of God on you, Deborah. He said, that is exactly what it is. And I thought, wow, God. I said, Every, I said, people have probably been experiencing the glory of God and didn't even realize that's what it was. When people see you walking strong and you know that normally that's not something that happens, that is the glory of God on your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we look to see the glory and look to uh, recognize the glory when we see it and give God praise for it. You know, I, 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 you know, I said, you know, it's, it's just God, you know, it's God that's keeping me strong. It is true, but it is not just that. It is the glory of God on my life. And now that I know what it is, I got even more excited. I was like, oh, man, God, I love this. I love this. I love the fact that it's not me, but it's you, which means that I am learning to rest Hallelujah. I am learning to rest. Praise God. Well, I just wanted to throw that out at you, but actually, <laughs> actually tonight we're going to talk about Jesus being the game changer. Jesus is the game changer. Praise God. Things changed when Jesus entered into this earth. It was something that people were looking for and things were happening leading up to it. I mean, John the Baptist came on the scene and talked about it. But when Jesus showed up, some things happened. Everybody didn't see it, but some stuff happened. And we're going to look at some of those things. Let's first look in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. And we're going to read this out of the, um, let's read it out of the King James. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenus, and that's probably Carinus, I believe, um, 
was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his exposed wife, as his spouse wife, being great with child, meaning she was just pregnant. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. I mean, King James got some words. That means she had the baby. <laughs> and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone, around, shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And you know, people get all happy. They normally stop there at Christmas time, and everybody's like, oh, yay. Yeah, yeah. But if you keep reading, it says, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, and suddenly, Jesus is born. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. When Jesus came in, he had a hallelujah chorus. To, I mean, you know, talking about a theme song. It said that heavenly, they, they said, uh, I read in one translation, I think it's in the Amplified, it said armies of angels showed up and started singing. Can you even imagine Everybody on key and everybody in tune. Heavenly sounds. Woo, wouldn't you have liked to have heard that? It says, and suddenly all these angels showed up at the, Jesus was the game changer. Something, something had happened that had never happened before. Something that people were looking forward to for years suddenly showed up in the earth. And this is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 1, and we'll read this out of the King James as well. Starting at verse 1. Let's read, it out of the, uh, let's read it out of the King James first. It says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Let's move over to the Amplified, and let's read verse 2. It says, but in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son, whom he appointed heir and law, lawful owner of all things. He appointed Jesus lawful owner of all things. Also by and through whom he created the worlds. He says he owns everything. Jesus created the worlds and the reaches of space and the ages of time. He made, produced, built, operated, and arranged them in order. Yeah. This is Jesus. He just showed up in the flesh. It says, he is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine. He is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. Listen at that. Not the image of God like human flesh. He said he's the image of God's nature. It's like word came alive. It's almost like if you say chair and chair shows up. That's what he's talking about. Hallelujah, glory to God. He says again, he is, verse 3, he is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outraying or radiance of the divine, and he is a perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. When he had by offering himself accomplished all our cleansing of sin and uh, riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. 
This is Jesus showed up in the world, the one who created all things, holding everything together, showed up in human flesh. Glory to God, accompanied by a choir, a heavenly choir. But he's in the earth and he's doing the thing that God wants him to do. Let's look, and Jesus said, or God said in this word, he said, in the time past, I talked to you through prophets. He said, but now I want you to hear Jesus. Now I want you to hear what he has to say. Let's look at that again in Mark chapter 9 and verse 7. Mark chapter 9 and verse 7. And this is, uh, we a lot of times call this, I believe, the Mount of Transfiguration. This is where Jesus called up, had a couple of disciples go with him on a mountain. And, you know, they see Moses and they see Elijah. And, of course, they don't know what to do. But then again, this is what happened while they were there. See, Jesus is a game changer. He says in verse 7, And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. See, things are about to change. You've been living under the rules and regulations of the old covenant, but my son has shown up and some new stuff has just started to happen for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God wasn't silent concerning Jesus, not at all. And how can a big God be quiet? Even when the Holy Ghost showed up, everybody in, in the town knew that the Holy Ghost had shown up. And we be trying to subdue the Holy Spirit, you know, let's keep him quiet, let's keep him, you know, all tied up on the inside of us. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, I want to be loud. I want to be loud. I want everybody to see me. Not you, but I want everybody to see me. Glory to God. I want everybody. I want, I want everybody to see me. I want them to see the glory of God. That's the only way they're going to see me. You need to hear what Jesus got to say and say what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20. Hebrews 10 and verse 20. Here it is. He says, this is in the uh, King James. It says, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that, that is to say his flesh and, have a, and, and having a high priest over the house of God. He says now it's a new and living way in order to enter or approach the throne of God. Used to be in order to approach God, you know, you had to have all your little animals together and then you didn't really get to approach God. What you do is you go take it to the priest and then the priest had to go through some cleansing. Then after he'd gone through his cleansing, then he would go into the holies of holies. And if he was right, then of course your sacrifice was accepted and I just don't know what was supposed to happen to you if he wasn't clean and they couldn't hear him anymore and he was dead. So I guess you just had to hold on to all that sin till you could come back when the priest was... He says, no, we're going to do this a new and living way. He said, because the old way only brought death. He said it was a ministry of death. It was not a ministry of life, meaning that the rules and regulations that I gave you didn't cause us to be personal with one another. It was just stuff that I told you, do, don't, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. He said that didn't cause us to be close. He said, but now I got a new and living way a way that you can approach the throne of God. You can come right on in. You don't have to worry about cleaning yourself up. You just walk right on in. You just sashay right on up in the kingdom of God. Even if you sin right before you hit the, the, the throne, he's, he's open, he's wide, he's got, what do you want? What do you have to say? What can I do for you? Look at somebody say, Jesus was a game changer. Imagine it. Imagine. Imagine if when we got together tonight, we had to have a stable on the side. Because first, we had to go over there and kill some animals. Then we had to make sure the pastoral staff was okay and clean and, and right before God. God forbid you saw them doing something they shouldn't have been doing. You'd be like, no, don't give him my sacrifice. <laughs> you see one long, we'll see one line longer than the other one. Now, I saw that brother. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to him. But in this new and living way, you can walk in yourself. Look at somebody say, I can walk in myself. Oh, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 1. 
Praise God. John chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, in the, beginning, the uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Who is he talking about? Jesus. 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 He said that he is the perfect imprint. He is the nature of God. It's like God took all of his Word, all of his Word, put it in flesh, and sent it so we could see it. He says, the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Not anything was made that was made. That's why the scripture says that uh, nothing's impossible for God. Let's look at that. Let's look at Luke. Luke. Glory to God. Luke chapter 2. Is that where I want to go? It's not in my notes, so hold on one second. Luke chapter 1. I guess that is the good thing about having paper. I knew it was in Luke, and I knew which side of the page it was on. <laughs> Luke chapter 1. <laughs> And let us look at, um, oh gosh, we don't want to go all the way back up. This is about um, the angel coming and talking to Mary concerning her having uh, uh, a son, naming him Jesus. Let's look at um, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Let's go down to verse 36. This is because she's having a, a conversation with the angel concerning uh, how this uh, miraculous birth is supposed to take place. And then after the angel explained these things to her, it says in verse 36, uh, looking in at the King James, it says, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Then in verse 37, it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. I like to amplify because it says, For with God nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. No word from God is without power. We got to understand that has nothing to do with us. God has, has made his word to do what it's supposed to do. So there is no word that you get from God that's not full of the power to carry out what it's saying. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, Jesus, that's the game changer. No word from God. Nothing that he tells you is impossible. First of all, don't think it's impossible. Glory to God. Let's go on. It says, And at that time Mary arose and went with haste into, uh, into the hill country uh, to a town of Judea. And she went to the house of Zechariah and entered in, saluted Elizabeth. And it occurred that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit. I have a feeling that was more, ladies, than that little movement we that we have, you know, it's like, ooh, and then you're telling your husband, oh, oh, the baby's moving, and they're looking at you like, ah, because you almost feel it from, in, from the inside, and they kind of look. I mean, later on, they can see the baby moving, but they said the baby leaped in her womb. Everything surrounding God was just, and everything surrounding Jesus is so fantastic when you start looking at it. And then it says in, um, let's look at verse 41 again. And it occurred that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit. And she cried out with a loud cry and then exclaimed, Blessed, favored of God above all other women are you. And blessed, favored of God is the fruit of your womb. And, and how have I deserved that this honor should be? Granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For behold, the instant the sound of your salutation reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed, happy, to be envied is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of the things.
things that were spoken to her by the Lord. Fortunate is she who believed what was spoken to her by the Lord. You know you have prayer times and God tells you something, tells you, not someone else. He said, you're blessed if you believe what he said. That's when it becomes not, that's when it becomes uh, possible for something that seems to be impossible. You gotta be, you gotta believe the thing that he said. She said, blessed. I love that. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment. There will be a fulfillment. I don't care what goes, what comes, there will be a fulfillment out of what God told me. He told me I was going to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost and I was going to get pregnant. I never heard of that before, never seen that before. And you know what? She may have wanted to go tell her best girlfriend, but she'd be like, I don't know about that, Mary. You might need to go back and hear from God again. And God can tell you some things, and you try to share it with people, and they be looking at you like, you need to go back. But blessed, look at somebody say, I'm blessed because I believe there will be a fulfillment out of what God has said to me. Hallelujah. Blessed. 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 Bless, bless, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to John, back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, God says that, hallelujah, that Jesus is the sole expression of who he is, his very nature, how God thinks, how God sees things, how God responds to things. Jesus is not looking to, to knock us down, nor is God. He just, want, uh, he just want his word to be fulfilled. The Bible said he sent his word. He sent his word. I sent my word to heal you. I sent, and sometimes people think it's just a, a physical healing, but he, in the book of Thessalonians, it says he want us whole, body, soul, and spirit. That means all of us complete. He want us whole. You read in the Bible where it talks about people being healed, and it says he want them every whit whole. I mean, I want the whole entire being to be whole, and we shouldn't stop looking for it, expecting it until it's fulfilled, everything concerning us. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, those angels didn't come down here to sing just for no reason. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Hallelujah. <laughs> John chapter 1, verse 16. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. In the Amplified, it says, For out of his fullness, out of Jesus' fullness, Glory to God. Everything that he is full of, out of his fullness, out of his fullness, we have all received, all, all, all received. We all have received. <laughs> he said we all have received. We all have a share. We were all supplied with one grace after another. Remember, we have to interpret that one favor after another, one favor after another. The Bible says, if you look further up, it says that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Moses brought the law, something we could never live up to. He said, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So when Jesus was born, hallelujah, there were instances he couldn't help but show his grace to those that he didn't even come to. You remember the woman, she came, she was like, you know what, Jesus, I need for you to do this. And she was like, I didn't come for you. I didn't come for you. And she said, well, you know what? Even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. And he was like, I can't help it. It's who I am. Here, take this and go. Take this, take this and go. Take this and go. Hallelujah. <laughs> and everybody who would believe in him, he said, become a son of God. Become a part of the household of God. Therefore, we get to get everything that's in the household. And here he says, of his fullness, we have received one grace after another grace. And the Bible says that at the mention of Jesus' name, 
at the mention of your Savior, at the mention of your friend Jesus. Some people are like, who is Jesus? He my friend, he my Savior, he's my deliverer. Who is he? He's all of those. Out of his fullness, he's your friend, he's your brother, he's your savior, he's your deliverer, he's your healer, he's your supplier, he is everything, all in all. The Bible said, at the name of Jesus, demons will flee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus. When you know, it's not just saying Jesus. You have to know what backs up the name of Jesus, of his fullness. I have favor. Oh, I, I, can, I remember when, when Crystal became, uh, came and got revelation of God's love for her. And she was so excited about the love of God. I was talking to her one day, and she said, oh, Mom, I'm trying to get this parking space. Uh, she was in college in Georgia. She said, I'm trying to get this parking space. And she said, because uh, it's, very, it's very difficult here, and I don't want to be late for my class. And I said, well, well, well what are you going to do? She says, it's okay. I'm going to get a parking space. I said, you are? She said, yeah. She said, I'm going to get a parking space because Jesus loves me. She said, that's why I'm going to get it. It ain't because I earned it. It ain't because I done something special. I'm going to get it purely because God loves me. That's the reason I'm going to get it. Why am I going to be healed? Because God loves me, and of his fullness, I have received one favor after another favor. I didn't have to do everything right. It's okay. Hallelujah. Because at the mention of his name, demons know I'm talking about the favor of God's about to kick into my life. Ooh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Just need to call his name, right? We just need to call his name. See, God ain't trying to make it complicated. Things have to change when you call his name, when you know what his name means, when you know the, the, the force behind the name, when you know that grace, hallelujah, the favor of God, what is it? Surrounds you like a shield, and goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, <laughs> the, we talk about it's already done, and it is already done. And we have to understand some things. Your believing it don't make it done. Your not believing don't make it not done. Your believing just causes you to be able to enjoy what's already done. Let me give you an example. If we were in this building, and I told you the sun was shining, it's around about 75 degrees, because y'all like that temperature, about 75 degrees, and it's feeling good outside. Now, whether you believe or not believe me, the sun is still shining. The thing of it is, if you believe me, you'll go out and you'll partake of the sun shining. If you don't, you won't go out and partake of the sun shining. That didn't make the sun shine or not shine, did it? So the word of God is true. You can believe it and enjoy it, or you can not believe it and not enjoy it. It's up to you. <laughs> Glory to God. But the Bible says, the Bible tells me, the B-I-B-L-E, that at the mention of his name, things change on my behalf. So I think we need to sing that. Don't y'all think we need to sing when I call his name, when I call his name, when I call his name, things got to change when I call his name. Hallelujah. Because I know what's behind the name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to stand to your feet when you call his name? Y'all know things got to change. Amen. And if you need some stuff to be changed tonight, Hallelujah, when you call his name, understand victory is inevitable. Look at somebody and say, victory is inevitable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 